Hope you're doing well. Um, we're gonna go through all of our stuff like we normally do in this lesson format, but as usual, all of your stuff that you send me is looking fantastic. I'm so excited to, to dig into that a little bit here. So the first thing I wanna talk about today is actually something different. So this month there's going to be a practice contest. And I'm gonna email this over instead of handing it to you for this week, but your, your practice sheet basically looks like this. So you'll see you have all um, seven days of the week listed out here. Now I don't expect you to practice seven days of the week. Um, but it's it's there in case you do end up with seven days of practice for the week. You'll basically just pick whatever your first practice day is. So if that's today, then that would be written under day one. And then if you practice, is that day one? It's hard backwards. <laughs> yeah, day one. And then if you practice tomorrow, that would be day two. And then if your next practice day isn't until Sunday, that's where you would fill in for day three. So you'll just fill in as many days as you are able to actually do between now and our next lesson. There's going to be a couple of different ways to win prizes for this one. Um, and the contest itself is only two weeks long. So it's just this week and next week because the winners are going to be announced at the recital at the house show performance. So um, there's a couple of different ways you can win if you have the most minutes or the most practice days. But another way you can win is actually there's this other box down here at the bottom that says challenges and solutions. And so all that is for is as you're going throughout your practice this week, I want you to actually have the mindset of looking for the hard things about what you're working on. It's really easy to work on the easy stuff. This week, I want your mindset to be, where are my challenges? Where are the tricky places? Where do I continually miss something? Look for those spots. Then if you can figure out a specific challenge, for example, uh, let's see, maybe on, on Jingle Bells. So on Jingle Bells, if you are having trouble remembering what a note is on a particular place, right? That would be the challenge. So you would write down that for the challenge. And then maybe your solution is to isolate the, the just to one hand for that section and maybe you only do a little small section. Maybe it's only the two measures, including the place where you're having trouble with the note. So maybe that's a possible solution, right? It's really just about looking for tricky things and coming up with possible strategies that might help you out with those places. Because again, it's easy to work on the stuff that comes easy and it's easy to fall into the mindset of, um, you know, I'm just gonna kind of run through everything a certain number of times and be on my way and that's probably fine. Now you'll improve that way, but it's not always the best way to work on something, especially if you have something that's giving you extra trouble. So that's kind of what that part is about for this week. So like I said, I'll just email that over to you um, today so that that way you can have that and just fill it in as you go. So then the other thing you'll, you'll need to know is that there's three categories um, for how to keep track of your time. So the first category is called review and recital. So if you decide that you do wanna do the performance, this would be however many minutes you spend working on the pieces you're gonna perform. So let's say you do wanna do the performance and you decide you wanna play the Tarantella and Sailing, okay? So all the minutes that you spend, let's again say today, working on Tarantella and Sailing, let's say you work on those two pieces for five minutes, you would just put five minutes on that category, okay? Um, if you decide not to do the recital, that would just be anything off your review list, which would probably only be two or three minutes. Um, then the next one is anything from the practice notes. So anything that's not for the recital or just the other stuff that we have in the notes that we're doing in our lesson time, that would go there. And then extra is the third category. So if you um, are just playing around for fun or if you're playing other stuff, you know, either I know some students end up doing stuff for church or for school or if you just go through old books for fun um, or just play around with no music in front of you whatsoever. That time actually counts in this contest. It usually doesn't, but this time it does. So anything you do that's extra that's not anywhere in our in our practice notes or from your review list, that would go in the extra category. Okay, if you have any questions, um, you can have your mom just shoot me a text or, or send an email or um, something that we can just clear that up really right away. But uh, yeah, should hopefully make sense. And again, if you just get stuck, let me know. Oh, I don't know why I'm closing that. I still need that. All right, so that's the contest. Speaking of the recital, um, do let me know soon if you think you wanna do it or not. It's gonna be super chill and laid back. It'll actually end up feeling more like a workshop than anything else. Um, because you'll just be in in a house and <laughs> um, only going up there with with 
a couple of other people and most people that are there will not actually be in that room watching you. So um, it'll be, I think, uh, an easy way to kind of ease into live performance if you are feeling up for it. But I definitely think after getting your videos for today that um, the Tarantella, of course, would be a great option. We've, we've had that super ready for a long time, but sailing would be another awesome option. We could, of course, do Jingle Bells too if you wanted to. I think sailing is, is in a really, really good spot. We might end up feeling a little bit better about that one overall but it would be totally up to you. And if you just wanted to do one song, that would be totally fine too. So keep thinking about it. Let me know soon. Um, let's go over the theory here. So I've got this pulled up here. Let me see. Make sure I can see both of them. All right, there we go. Okay, so we were working on flats this time and we actually, we did a great job. I think there were a couple places where you were switching from bass clef into treble clef which is a huge pain. Sometimes that is like such an annoying thing to get you. But I think that's what happened. So on number seven, um, you labeled and circled everything perfectly if it was all in treble clef. So to me, I mean, I, I know you understand the flats and the clefs and everything. That's, that's not a concern at all. And it looks like you know what to do and how to do it. So that's totally fine. I think that's just kind of a, a reminder for the next time we, we do theory. Just make sure you double check the clefs because it's such an easy thing to miss. So then on section number eight, it looks like we... Um, yeah, did the same thing. They, they give you the example in, in bass clef, but all of these are in bass clef as well. So I actually wanted to go over this real quick with you. This was 29. Because the, the treble and bass clef thing aside, um, you actually ended up with some notes that would be, again, correct in treble clef, but they're kind of above the staff in order to make it work here, right? So one of those was let's see you know what it might actually work better if i do it separately that you can see a little bit more clearly okay so the first one that we had if this is bass clef uh well we're pretending it's treble clef so anyway um let's see we've got the g flat here which would be in the space and then B flat and then A flat. So the problem is, and again, ignore my, my bass clef because we're treating them like treble clef notes. Problem is these guys are all just kind of hanging out in space there. So let me make this a little clearer. I'm have to put up with some of my scribbles. We had B flat. Oh, no, let's see, and now I'm naming them in bass clef. See, these clefs will get you. Okay, so we're pretending it's treble, which means that's a G flat and a B flat and an A flat. There we go, that's better. Okay, so now the problem is that the G flat is sitting on top in the space here, which is exactly what we would want for this one. But the B flat and A flat, it's kind of hard to be sure exactly where those go. And that's because anytime we've gone higher than just the space above the, the staff, we need to show specifically where we're going with ledger lines. So for the B flat, oh, that ended up a little bit thicker than I planned. Uh, we were going to have that ledger line right here. So that way we can clearly see that the note is sitting in the space on top of this ledger line. Same thing for the A flat up here. Oh gosh, well, I guess I'm doing really huge lines today. Okay, so the A flat here would be not taken over by the line, but would be sitting directly in the line, right? It's the line is going through the note there. So that way we can clearly see exactly where we want that note. So that's again, another little theory thing, um, but good opportunity to kind of go over that since we were naming them in, in treble clef instead. Um, you had them, it looks like in all the right spots. We just want to clarify exactly what those spots are by including the ledger lines. So very nice job. What we'll do for next time is page 30. Page 30 is looking at natural signs, which are kind of fun. So a natural sign, if you remember, cancels out a sharp or a flat, which means that it we can really only have it after we've had that note with a sharp or a flat, right? So this page works a little bit differently. We're not going to be actually 
focusing only on the natural signs because something else has to come first, like a sharp or a flat. So on this first section, they're gonna have you naming all of these notes here, but when you name the notes with the natural, you're gonna have to also add the natural sign. So when you get to this one, you would name this note with the flat right down here. But then on this one, you're going to have to draw in the natural sign and then name the note like they did over here with the note name and the natural sign here, okay? When we're naming um, down below the notes, it's not drawing it in on the staff, it works the same way like our sharps and our flats do. So you'll have the letter name and then the natural sign right afterwards. Now you'll have to be careful here because on the second example, on the second line here, we switch to bass clef. So keep an eye out for that one this time. But it's the same thing as what you had before. You're naming the, the first note with the sharp or the flat that's there, and then you'll add the natural sign and name the natural note as well. Now on a, example number 10, um, they are telling you specifically you're only gonna draw in a natural sign on the second and the fourth beats of the measure, but it's really just the same thing because on beat one and three, you have a note with a sharp or a flat, and then the same note, but you're gonna make it a natural. So it's still naming, well, not naming, but you're still identifying the first note with a sharp or a flat, and then adding a natural to the second note, okay? And I think that is it. So you're just adding the naturals on um, any note that's following a sharp or a flat, and that's the whole page. All right. So let's see, our A major scale, awesome job. Um, fingering looks great. It's kind of funny watching it on this video because um, for some reason it mirrors the image. So it's like my brain is, is thinking, wait a second, which hand is which? <laughs> but you did it perfect, it looks awesome. We'll actually um, take a little bit of a break from technique, we'll start something new probably next time, but you'll have nothing new for technique for this week. Uh, and then we had our two songs. So like I said earlier, I think sailing sounds fantastic. Your timing on that is so good. Counting, beautiful, awesome rhythm. So I again, I think that would be a great option for the recital if you decide that you want to give that a try. Um, let's let's keep it just in the mix for our, our practice for another week. Um, whether or not you decide to do the performance, just so again we can kind of sit with the piece a little bit longer. Now that you've got it to a really comfy spot, we want to make sure that um, we we give that a little bit time of time too, so that that way you know you, you have a chance to just enjoy actually playing it, right? It's it's a lot more fun when you don't have to kind of think and, and work quite so hard just to make your way through it when you can actually enjoy the song and appreciate the melody and um, focus on just making it a little bit more musical. So that's what we'll do this week, whether or not we decide to perform it. And then with Jingle Bells, it looks like we're getting a lot more confident with that one too. Very nice job. So the only thing I wanna take a, a quick look at with this one and we'll we'll maybe try out one or two more things with this over the next couple of weeks but we're making some great progress only thing i wanted to look at is whenever we have this rhythm right here whenever we've got these pairs of eighth notes right and we have this quite a lot so let's see uh but not anywhere else on the first page <laughs> okay <laughs> instead second page um, and a little harder backwards here. Let's see. Um, we've got another pair right here, right? And another pair right here. Well, I guess that's only three. So not a crazy amount, but enough that we want to kind of take a look at this, make sure that it's feeling good. So anytime we have that pair of eighth notes, we almost want to think of it as a group of three because the eighth notes themselves have to go fast, but that means you're also gonna get to the next note pretty quick. So instead of thinking about this as fast, fast, slow, right? Because a quarter note will feel slower than the eighth notes. We almost wanna think of it like one, two, three, okay? So that these three notes are all a group because we're gonna get to this one really fast. Otherwise, the second eighth note ends up feeling kind of long, right? So if I play through just what the right hand's doing there, make sure you can hear it. 
All right, so I'm just gonna start at the beginning and play the right hand melody. So we start with the dashing through the, oh my gosh. Oh, I've got another program open. I am so sorry. What on earth is this feedback that I'm getting? Okay. Stand by. Here we go. That's ah, normal. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying from the beginning with the first melody here, we have dashing through the snow. And then we have those three eighth notes, right? So if I think fast, fast, and then slow, well, my second eighth note kind of holds on a little too long, right? And right now we're kind of playing them more like quarter notes. We kind of have dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Instead, we want that to think in a one, right? And that group of three, that's a little faster. So that would be more dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Right. So let's try that out for this week, kind of thinking of those those places where we have the pair of eighth notes as not a pair of notes, but actually a group of three notes. Right. Including the note that comes after it. The next place that you have that is on the next page. When you're right here, when we get to oh, what fun it is to ride. Right. So if we start that line, so I'm on the second page and I'm going to play the third line here, just the melody. So we have, uh, oh, what fun it is to ride in a one, right? So that's that same idea. It's in a one. Oh, look at that. It's the same lyric every time. It's always in a one. Who knew? Probably a lot of people, I just figured that out. Okay, so every time you have that, try and think of it as a fast group of three notes and see how that goes for this week. Okay, awesome work on everything. Um, I think, yeah, that's all that we have. Cool, all right, well have a great rest of your week and I will see you on Tuesday.